my illness, your life changes completely. You're just, com you're just completely a different person. Kennedy, story, Bradford Kennedy moving to his left. To meet that challenge, then to find you can't get up in the morning and walk is very difficult. Kennedy, made some space for himself and a good shot to the fine goal! Brilliant goal by Ray Kennedy! It's a constant fight, you're fighting your body all the time, day by day, hour by hour. Ray Kennedy, oh what a brilliant run by Ray Kennedy! Absolutely choice goal. I'm not looking for sympathy. I'm only trying to describe Parkinson's disease. Or in for Carradice? No, Kennedy is there. And Dalgleish, the scorer of two goals. Setting up a break here for Kennedy. Two against three. Kennedy trying to jump in, man, he's done it! Ray Kennedy's goals have changed over the years. During the 70s, he pursued trophies with more success than almost any other player in the game. Over a decade, first with Arsenal, then with Liverpool, he won six league championships, the FA Cup and the League Cup in domestic competition. Abroad, he picked up winners' medals in the Fairs Cup, its successor, the UEFA, and played in three European Cup winning teams. The scale of his achievement with two of England's top clubs made him a familiar television face. But first a word from Liverpool's Ray Kennedy, who explains one of the reasons for that success over the years. <coughs> it's not a real secret. They just keep everybody on their toes uh, by uh, buying different players and so, so on and putting pressure on other players. But the pressure is a nice pressure. Jimmy and Vest, we had a good seven, eight years together, Jimmy and I. As the public um, face of Parkinson's disease, the pressures on Ray Kennedy are different now. Themselves and getting through an interview is an achievement in itself. I really went looking for a... Uh, I'm going to stop. I'm going to have to stop. I'm too slow now. I'm going yeah. to have to Ray lives his life in two-hour segments, punctuated by pills and injections that control a body his brain no longer can. And this is just the chemicals yes. wearing off? Yes, medication wearing off. It's a six million dollar man now, Steve Austin. Slow. Well, what does it feel like when the chemicals start to wear off, because you look fine. For me, you look oh, fine. No, I, I, I feel as if I'm looking through a mask now. I feel, I've got, I feel as if I've gone right within myself. And I feel as my face is frozen, and my movements are getting slower, and I'm slowing down rapidly. That's it. Parkinson's disease attacks part of the brain regulating mood and motion. There are 100,000 sufferers in Britain and no known cure. Ray, who was diagnosed five years ago at the age of 34, is one of the youngest. It's a horrible illness. It's just, it doesn't kill you, but it's just it's a quality lifestyle of oil. For the past few years, Ray has been living off his player's pension. Fighting the disease has become a full-time job. Just have to sit and wait till it passes. It's quite, quite easy, it's pleasant in here, it's quiet and restful. When you're out in public and it's stressful, it's causing more anxiety and it takes a while to, for it to get through. The more, uh, less stress you have, the better it is for it. I'm an alien, I can have a good conversation. <laughs> Keep going. This is getting through now. Fidgeting, getting out of houses. That's a different scene, different scene now. Much better. Back, back alive again. Yeah. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's Gav. Everybody. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Who am I? That's hardly a question that needs asking at Anfield or Highbury. And nearly 20 years to the day since his double triumph with Arsenal, it's at Highbury that the two clubs he served and the fans he gave pleasure to are gathering to give something back. Get your program. He was the guy that you always wanted to be at school. You, you had two kinds of people. You wanted to be Charlie George or Ray Kennedy. So I always wanted to be Ray Kennedy, really. So. <laughs> when I was in um, first and second year at secondary school, I used to cover all my maths books with his pictures instead of covering the books properly. So I used to get told off by the teachers. I feel sorry for Stanley Matthews myself. I keep saying I must repeat on it. The man mustn't know nothing about football. I made him a knight.
In 1967, Stanley Matthews was manager of Port Vale, and he provided one of his 16-year-old apprentices with the kind of setback tailor-made for a footballer's biography. But that was um, that was quite sad. I was signed a two-year apprentice professional, um, but after one year he released us, he said I wasn't wasn't good enough to be a professional footballer. He did inform me when my parents said I'd be coming home after one year, and uh, that's what happened. It was a big disappointment. The great Stanley Matthews telling you that you're not made a footballer. And, I was very, very disappointed. In fact, uh, a few tears, I think. Ray went home to his family in Seton Delaval, Newcastle, and resigned himself to a job in the local sweet factory and football once a week for New Hartley Juniors. Within a year, though, he'd come to the attention of shrewder judges than Sir Stan. The Ar Arsenal scouts approached me and asked if I would go to Arsenal, which was a big jump from Port Vale in a space of one year. I was virtually out, out of uh, working in the sweet factory for a year, nearly, not quite a year. And that's if I go to Arsenal, and uh, as I said, I was ready for the for the, for the challenge this time. The thing that was impressive about Ray was he, but because he was a very big boy, uh, was his touch. His first touch was absolutely first class, and uh, I think that that ability was one of his outstanding features. And it was a first touch that ignited Ray's senior career. 3-0 down away to Anderlecht in the first leg of the Fairs Cup final, Bertie Mee sent on his 18-year-old striker with seven minutes left. I think my first touch, uh, I was just running, running around the box and uh, the ball came across and I just put my head to it and it was in the net and that was 3-1 and the game finished 3-1 and I was able to pretty much a hero from the start because it would give Arsenal the hope uh, of getting back into the game with a weird goal. But the second leg, um, it proved right that they didn't need my goal, they won the game outright, but it gave them hope at that time they needed it, so it was a good start, yes, it was, and that was the start of me, my first team experience. Yes. Crowds are something Ray's routine is now carefully planned to avoid. They make him anxious, and anxiety can bring the symptoms of his illness bubbling to the surface. Today, though, he's back in the old routine. This game is, is a chance for me to get myself on a, on a level footing and uh, start again on the first ladder and I feel confident then that uh, I can meet the, the demands of living the everyday world head on and just live a normal life. I say the footballing world is not very, very friendly but it has been to me. Uh, I was hospital for three weeks and fell at Frank McClintock, the old captain at Arsenal, was in, I'd say, three or four times a week seeing me. That, uh, nobody asked him to come in, but he was in to see me every day. We look back on the days when you were a great player for Arsenal, and we shall never forget those days, and we are delighted to be in a position to uh, help you today. I thought I was at all school and people keep around John Sam was just around the place. Right. Yeah, yeah. So I'll tell you who's here for the old days. There's only Sammy. The rest of us are coming. Oh, Raddy uh, coming? Raddy's oh, coming, so playing. Raddy, Charlie's coming, uh, Snouty. So if we can get a grip of them, we'll get Charles a name. Sure. Jordy's right. playing. Yeah. yeah. Right. Jordy. Uh, Bob Walsh is away on holiday. Oh, is he? Aye, uh, he's away on holiday. So. Are you going to play? No, no, no. I'm not kidding. Yeah, I was going to play. I was going I'm just saying, yeah. Russia would get past me when I was 21, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Can you remember back that far? <laughs> By the end of the double season, Radford and Kennedy were as much a part of David Coleman's vocabulary as one nil. But it began with Ray playing understudy to another 19-year-old, Charlie George. Charlie uh, got injured in the first game of the season. And, uh, and Ray were introduced into the second game of the season. And really, that's the first time we played together. And uh, that would have really the start of an incredible partnership. Kennedy. Story, Bradford Kennedy moving to his left. Other teams used to come and bring their own forwards just to watch them too. That's how good they were. Rice. Kennedy! Perfectly placed by Rice. Perfectly taken by Kennedy. 
Soon, Ray had overtaken his senior partner as the team's leading scorer, as Arsenal tried to do the same to Leeds at the top of Division One. What was that team like to play in? It was, the characters were fantastic characters. Uh, Frank McClintock, George Graham, uh, George Armstrong, uh, Peter Simpson, John Redford, the, 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 but they were all older than me, and to be honest, they took the pressure off me completely. Uh, anything problems I had, but I had no problems really. They, they just obviously nothing. I just went out there and played it. He was a very uh, important part of, 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 the, of the double side, in ter both as a personality and what I call the chemistry of the setup. And you need the extroverts, such as uh, uh, McClintock and uh, the flamboyance of Graham, George Graham, that is. But you also need the bread and butter stuff of Geordie Armstrong and uh, the, the, the quiet application that Kennedy and Story gave. They, these, it was all part of the chemistry. Armstrong, Graham, Kennedy! Rice, Kennedy! Graham moving up number 11. And a fine goal! What a beautiful goal by, by Kennedy. Story going outside Armstrong. Got a touch, and it's Kennedy who finally pushed it in. By May, Ray had scored 25 goals. Inevitably, though, the one he's always remembered for is the 26th. It came at White Hart Lane in the final game of the season with the championship on the line. What better place there than, than uh, away out to uh, Tottenham, the old enemy? And I remember we broke away about uh, 10 minutes from the end or something. The ball rebound off Pat Jennings and went out to the left, and I was just getting into the box, and George Armstrong crossed the ball, and uh, I thought, I'm, I'm going to score here with a free hair. The power must have beat Pat Jennings, and it went above his head and hit the crossbar and went in. That was, I would say that would rank as uh, the, the best goal of my career and the most satisfying um, although it was 19 I didn't realise what, what it was all about at the time uh, looking back it was, it was satisfying yes and five days later the satisfaction was to be doubled at Wembley Simpson so overwhelmed at being there, a young kid from Seton Delano in Newcastle, to be when was, was too much because I was emotionally really, really drained. We won fortunately, thanks to Charlie again. Charlie pulled us out of the, the mire. And uh, yes, I, that was me with the, the FA Cup with the double at 19. Yeah. Fantastic, couldn't believe it. And to be honest with you, I thought, well, this, does this happen every year? Goes Arsenal's way. The FA Cup this time. 
In his first full season, Ray had not only proved his old manager wrong, he'd already won more medals than the greats of Stan gathered in his career and seemed certain to be a fixture of the Arsenal team for years to come. He was superb, terrific in the air for a big fella, he had a great first touch and uh, he scored goals, look at the goals he scored. The season following the double, Ray's goals took him into the England under-23 side. But looking back, it's not his international debut that stands out in his memory, but an ordinary club game, which provided the first signs that all might not be well with his health. It was a nice, red hot sunny day, and we had a warm bath, and I felt I couldn't fasten my buttons, I was really clumsy with my hands, and I felt that they were as if I'd been playing in the snow, or had my hands in cold water. And it wasn't so, it was a rather blazing summer's day. And uh, just had a warm bath. And I thought, but that went away. Today's match is something of a generation game, with both sides fielding a combination of players who lined up alongside Ray and those who grew up admiring him. The players that have turned up, the likes of Kenny Daglish, Graham Sooners, George Graham, people like that that have played with him, know what he's done probably better than I do. You know, and the fact that they've turned up obviously means a lot. The good old days. A couple of goals. <laughs> when did you come down? A couple of goals. Monday. Yesterday? Monday. Monday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be on the back for two days. Yeah. Is she nice? Oh. <laughs> so there's no wrong with her. <laughs> <laughs> He's in Holland. Nobody got nobody contacted him. Yes, no, there's Terry Mac. I don't know. He, I just phoned him yesterday. He said, I'm off to Holland. <laughs> Probably going to Reaper Van. For the large Liverpool contingent in the 18,000 crowd, the big interest of today's events on the field is the conversion of two Liverpool managers back into players, the newly appointed Graham Souness and his immediate predecessor, Kenny Dalglish. <laughs> I think the reason why everybody's here is because of the tremendous respect they've got for me. I mean, I think sometimes footballers are, are labelled as being mercenaries. But when someone's in trouble and someone who's made a valid contribution for 20 years of playing football uh, is in a bit of trouble, they soon rally around and help. And I think that's a respect for a man and obviously a uh, disappointment in the position that he's in. But hopefully, the little bit that we're going to do today can help. Okay. That's it. Come on. Yeah. All right. It is. You raised the day, didn't you? Pick this day. Who? I know you must have made a whole goal. I know you did. Jimbo here. Who? Jimbo. Jimmy's just in there. Is he? Just in the table. I'll take him. How are you, Jerry? Okay. How are you, Jerry? All right. All right, sir. Thank you. 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 Oh, right, man. Well, thanks. You well. Yeah, very well, right. This is the start of my career. Yeah. Steve Burton Show. I was a youngster in Arsenal. He was in charge of his house. Fantastic. Nothing but blood trouble. This fellow's just bought a ball at Thanks, Steve. Well, coming, driving down just outside the ground here, it was absolutely fantastic to see so many people come out. And for, I'd say, the two top sides in the country to play against each other is a tremendous gesture. James! Hello, my son! How are you? Hi, son. Who's that? 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 They said that the story was the odd man, but it wasn't. No way. The man up the middle there was Kennedy. He was the man that took all the wax. To all the knots for everybody. And they'll all tell you that, all the players. Were you sad to see him go? Yeah, no doubt. Highway going to the left. This is Kennedy, and that's through. 
Liverpool's fifth and Ray Kennedy scoring in front of the cop for the first time as a Liverpool player. When he left Arsenal, it, it, I couldn't believe it, to be honest. I thought it was a great shame that the club let him go so early in his career. Now, he's come onto the scene quite quickly, and like you say, he's got those three top awards. And I think everybody expected him just to go on and go on and go on. Well, it, it was it was common sense that all of a sudden his form would come back a little bit. And in that period, they sold him. An amazing decision. A really amazing... How that ever happened, I'll never know. I remember my dad saying, to this day, he said, well, you've done what much you can do with Arsenal. In Liverpool, he said, I think you, you do better. And uh, that was that's my dad's wise words about it. At the time, I didn't believe him. And I said, well, fair enough. If they don't want you there, you might as well go. And uh, I took my father down to, to, to I said, yes, I'll talk to Liverpool. So my, my father and I went down to Liverpool and we arrived at Liverpool to meet the chairman. There was um, these posters that the newspaper put hoardings which said Shankly resigns. So I had finished with Liverpool. When the, uh, the, the deal had been arranged, then I finished with Liverpool. But the last thing, I was there at the signing, and the last thing I did. So that whilst I was leaving, I could have said, well, I'm not interested in signing anybody, I was because I was Liverpool mad and I wanted to see... I, w I worked right up to the last minute and the last minute job was Ray Kennedy. Initially, the fans were none too grateful to Shanks for his going away present. If Ray had found his own double act hard to follow at Highbury, he had Keegan and Toshak to contend with at Anfield. In his first season, he struggled to establish himself in the team and suspected he might be sold, but his manager had something more inventive in mind. I detected that he'd lost the appetite for front running and uh, we talked long and hard about it one day in the office and I said well I've just got a fancy that you could do the left midfield job and uh, uh, is uh, when I played he would have been a good inside left and we'll put it that way. The following season, Paisley did, with instant success. In midfield, Ray no longer took a front man's physical punishment, but retained his striker's instinct for taking a goal. That's a fine ball for Kennedy. And what a fine goal! Oh, we never had the, 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 the gumption or the guts to go in and say, look, I want to play here. I didn't even think that. But I always felt at Arsenal, I, I wasn't playing enough. I felt I wasn't getting enough satisfaction from the ball. I wanted to hang on to the ball a bit more. I wasn't greedy, but I just wanted to get more time with the ball. and. I thought I was more creative, but I would never go into manager and say, I want to play here. I, I was never kind of, I would never have done that. I, I was just faded away, probably. But thanks to Bob Pierce, yes, he, he, he resurrected my career, and I'm, I'm thankful to this day. Kennedy's gone early and wasn't picked up, and scores! We would go, basically, most of the time, down our right, where Terry McDermott is into the midfield area, right inside right-ish, and then Ray would ghost into the far post on Mark. I would say he's probably had the sweetest left foot I've ever seen. It, 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 there's a saying in the game, you can open cans, tin cans, and, and Ray could open tin cans with his left foot. Just overran that slightly, and here's Ray Kennedy with Case breaking on the right. Liverpool have played that ball so well this afternoon. McDermott is in support inside, and Phil Neal's made a run from the back. Still Case. There's Neal! Oh, I say! In his new role as chance maker as well as taker, Ray once again found himself in a team chasing the league title. And once again, the season came down to the final game. The centre circle, nodded down, comes to Richards. Kinden's moving for the return. That's a good ball. A chance here for Steve Kinden, and he makes it and gives Wolves a lifeline. Under 15 minutes left, and Liverpool still looking for this vital goal. Chipped up in the box, on by Toshek to Keegan, and the old firm have done it. 1-1, one, one, and that will be enough. Look at the delight on those faces of players and spectators. Neil knocking it in, comes sideways, Toshek taking his time. But using it to perfection, 2-1. Keegan. Liverpool ending the match and the season in fine style. Here's Ray Kennedy, stepped his man quite superbly. And what a lovely left foot to make it 3-1. The first two goals from the old firm of Keegan and Toshak. And the last one from Kennedy has made such an advance this season. The whole crowd just seemed to erupt and come from on the, on the pitch. And 
I was under a pile of bodies. I, I couldn't move, and I thought, I'm going to get trampled to death here. But nothing will take the, the way, the way, the, way the feeling that I felt that that first night that uh, at Highbury with 19. What do you what do you do when you win the championship? But looking back, uh, winning it with Liverpool, I knew exactly what happened. I knew what it was all about. Um, I knew why we'd won it, how we'd won it, and we deserved it. History, having repeated itself in the league, then did the same in the successor to the Fairs Cup, as Liverpool, like Arsenal, fell badly behind in the final. This time, though, Ray was on from the start, and the comeback he inspired was more complete. And everything was coming together then. My legs, my brain, uh, my body was all funky. I just felt everything was spot on at that time. And I felt I, felt I could have done anything at that time. After the 3-2 win at Anfield, a draw in Belgium was enough to take the UEFA Cup. And Ray capped his first season in midfield with an honour he'd never managed as a striker, a place in the full England team, which he celebrated with a goal on his debut. England now settling more and more into their rhythm. This is Trevor Brooking, coming back on the left for the cross. Only partly clear to Kennedy! And Lloyd could hardly have smelt it. He was a classical player. He was one of those players that you didn't see running around a lot, but he was always on the ball, great pass of the ball, great supporter, and always handy around the box to score goals. And to me, he was what I call a gentleman player. By that time, Liverpool seemed to have a gentleman's agreement with the rest of the first division concerning the league title. And the following season, they threatened to combine it with both the FA and European Cups. He may still get a chance. Plays it across. Kennedy with a chance to shoot and score! For once, the league was won with the relative luxury of a game to spare. And at Wembley, Ray narrowly missed becoming the first player in history to win the double twice, hitting the bar in a 2-1 FA Cup final defeat by Manchester United. Things went better in Europe, though. And Toshak going after it. Kennedy, 2-2! That goal against Saint-Étienne, one of nine Ray scored in a marathon 60-game season, helped Liverpool to their first European Cup final in Rome, where they took on Borussia Mönchengladbach. Football with Liverpool was on a different, uh, a different level to what Arsenal were at that time, in my opinion. And uh, it was a pleasure to play for them, which was great. And there were greater things to come. Notably the arrival of two Scottish reinforcements to an already strong side. Free kick then to be taken by Phil Neal. <laughs> Ray Kennedy's head gets it. And Dalgleish, there it is. Well, that was just easy. But he was, I suppose, regarded as a bit of a workhorse by the supporters, but that, that doesn't do him any justice. He, he had lots and lots of ability. He had a great eye for a goal. Always a threat on the far post down that left-hand side. From the day that, that I was there, the day that Ray left, he made a tremendous uh, contribution to the club's success. The first game that we played at Anfield, he was playing, and he, he laid on the, the goal for me to score against Newcastle. So, apart from being selfish, having fond memories of Razor for laying on my first goal at Anfield, uh, the overall contribution that he made was enormous. And, he was obviously one of the best players that has played for Liverpool and he formed one of the best midfields that clubs ever had. It was the newcomers who combined to clinch Liverpool's second successive European Cup win, soonest supplying Dalglish for the only goal against Bruges at Wembley. Success abroad had meant another long campaign, 58 games for Ray and seven goals. Liverpool's annual package tour ended in the early rounds the following season and they took frightening revenge at home. Unbeaten at Anfield on their way to a new points record, they averaged better than two goals a game. Ray scored 11, including the goal of the season. Ray Kennedy, oh, what a brilliant run by Ray Kennedy! Absolutely choice goal. Ray was an ever present in the side as Liverpool took the championship by eight points. But the private worries about his health were back. The next time I appeared was at Liverpool. Um, when I started, to, my right leg started to run. I felt I was carrying it. I felt it was catching the floor at times. But these weren't these weren't problems that were bad enough to stop us from playing or performing. Because when I was when I got going, there was no problem. But they always, they always said to me, um, try and start when the rest start. I still wait in time, it's the warm-up. People said that to me, I mean, Arsenal, 
and Liverpool. Why don't you start on the rest, Dad? On the field, though, everything was reassuringly familiar, with the league championship arriving on schedule in May. Two months later, Ray made his final international appearance at the European Championships in Italy. Over three years, he'd won 17 caps, scoring three goals. And in his last game came close to a fourth, which might have kept England in the competition. Kennedy! Oh, hit the post! A chance on the rebound, perhaps, for Woodcock. We were vying for places. I played in the first game when we drew against Belgium. And actually, Ron Greenwood, of course, my old West Ham manager, then plumped for, for Ray Kennedy in the, the big game against Italy, which we just got edged out 1-0. But uh, I remember Ray's hitting the woodwork. And uh, on another occasion, uh, you know, that could have been a hero and we could have gone on to win it. Well, I mean, my career didn't go too well. Uh, I felt that I never really enjoyed it, uh, playing for England. I was proud to play for England, but I didn't really enjoy it. It was... It was different. Play for Liverpool and play for England is completely different. Uh, some people are better for England than they do for the club, but to me, it was, it was strange. I, I didn't the players weren't playing as a unit, as, 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 all, as total as one. I felt there was too many people playing for themselves. Back at club level, there were no such problems, and Ray picked up his first League Cup winner's medal. But in what would be his last full season for Liverpool, he once again saved his best for Europe standing in as captain for the injured Phil Thompson in the second leg of a European Cup semi-final against Bayern Munich. Johnson, Kennedy is up, suddenly in space and onside and scores! Ray Kennedy has given Liverpool the lead. Suddenly, out of nothing, the skipper gets the goal, which changes the entire atmosphere. We thought we'd lost it that night. And I remember Bob Paisley giving me the signal to, to push up front. I thought, good if, if, if David Johnson sees me, I'm on my own for a chance here. And all credit to him, he did. And as it, as it come down, I, I think I controlled on my knee, but it wouldn't come down quickly enough. And I thought he was going to get it. But fortunately, if I, I swung my right foot, which is not my best one, and it was a goal, and that, uh, that but they changed the game completely. I think he must have been the calmest person in the stadium. Took it down with his chest, I think, and lined it up and rifled it in with his right foot. But that's the kind of man. Ray is. He had that great temperament for a footballer when he was on the pitch. Nothing was ever too much for him. Like taking throw-ins, for example. A stubborn insistence which paid off in the final itself with a famous Kennedy combination goal to beat Real Madrid. In the space of six years, Ray Kennedy and Liverpool had won four league championships, one league cup, one UEFA cup, and were champions of Europe for the third time. It was a pleasure and a privilege to play on that team. It was, to be honest with you, it was almost, looking back, it was, it was easy. Welcome to Highbury as British Aerospace Sportscast present a special football occasion, Arsenal versus Liverpool, not for the championship, but for Ray Kennedy's testimonial fund. 10 to three, time for Ray to leave the boardroom, head for the tunnel, and try to keep a handle on the pre-match nerves. I won't hope it goes well. I don't want any, I don't want me to fool myself, but I'm, I'm a big softy. For two clubs disputing the league championship, the quality of the Liverpool and Arsenal lineups is impressive. Beyond the odd veteran face, the only clues that this is a friendly are the two members of the Kennedy clan leading out the teams, Ray's daughter, Cara, and son, Dale.
Liverpool, a strong wind swirling round the stadium. That's terrific, terrific crowd. Yeah. Fantastic. Too soft. Fantastic. Lovely. Thanks. Well, they've all brought some new, man. I was now kind of enjoyed the match. I was moving that. That's terrible. Lovely. Fuck it. Looks this. You're right. Nice to see you. But now a match from the first division between Manchester United, this morning's leaders, and Swansea City. And we join commentator Barry Davis at the Vetch Field. Seven and a half years after being signed for Liverpool by Bill Shankly, Ray Kennedy starts a new career under the man that he was then expected to replace, John Toshak. Yes, that's, that's when the club was really set in, which is unfortunate for Swansea, and unfortunate for John Toshak, and unfortunate for me. Uh, things didn't go well. Me standing in me main game wasn't good, and Tosha accused me of trying, which I've never, never ever done in my life. But it looked as if I was that way, so I don't hold that against Tosha at all. But I couldn't put one leg a yard stride to stop the ball, and the thought was cheating, the thought I didn't, wasn't interested, the thought I wasn't trying. There were bright spots. A league winner's medal from Liverpool for the games he played that season before his transfer and a goal against Arsenal. But they were few. I remember sitting in the house one day and lying on the sunbed and, and, and my fingers index and started shaking. And I thought, as you've seen before, it's com comfortable. That is really irritating me. I can't get my arm comfortable. And it was niggling away at me. And I thought, well, I'm not playing well this one. The club's not going well. Maybe it's the pressures of all the. Uh, the problems that we have here. And I forgot about it, and then it got worse and worse and worse. And Ray's career went the same way. After Swansea, he spent short, unhappy spells at Hartlepool, in Cyprus, and on the coaching staff at Sunderland, all the time carrying the handicap not just of his illness, but also his ignorance of it. But if only people had known then, and I know, but I saw a lot of problems, and I, I reckon I could have finished on a high note, rather than the way I did finish here. Uh, which, that hurts it. That, that hurts a little because it was out of my control. Ray's symptoms weren't finally recognised as Parkinson's disease until 1986, by which time he was having trouble signing his autograph. For the last two years, he's been under the specialist treatment of Dr Andrew Lees at London's Middlesex Hospital. Parkinson's disease is a disorder of normal movement caused by the loss of nerve cells in a small area of the brain. Uh, the area of the brain which is damaged in Parkinson's disease is called the basal ganglia and is located in the grey matter at the basement of the brain. Uh, these cells contain pigment, they look black under the microscope, uh, and contain a chemical messenger called dopamine, which is important in the normal regulation of movement uh, and the control of mood and emotions. Uh, the problem, if one draws an analogy with a, a car, uh, would be that the motor is functioning quite normally, but the starter motor is defective. It's embarrassing, and I could get stuck for four hours, two hours. When you say stuck, what yes. do you mean? Just can't move, can't walk. He will relate instances where he would set off to the shops, perfectly normal, mobile, uh, to all intents with very little wrong with him, and then become stranded like a beached whale uh, in the supermarket and have to be wheeled out in a trolley and, and put in a taxi. To get him through these daily crises, Ray has begun taking a drug pioneered by Dr. Lees, apomorphine. Which is harder doing that or signing a check. Yes. Apomorphine is a, a drug which replaces dopamine within the brain. Because it's injected like insulin under the skin, it works extremely quickly. And it means that Ray can bail himself out of 
difficulties far more efficiently than he was able to do with pills. And while Dr. Lees is helping Ray, Ray's returning the favor. As an athlete trained to notice subtle changes in his body, and one who's been filmed throughout his career, he's an invaluable case study. We believe that there is a latent interval before we're able to diagnose Parkinson's disease with certainty. Quite how long that is, uh, we're unsure, but it's probably a number of years. Uh, and I've had the opportunity to examine some of the video clips of, of Ray's playing career. Uh, and there seems little doubt that it was present at least four or five years before the diagnosis was made. I started to switch off and um, I couldn't move. So I Ray is very young to develop Parkinson's disease, although not unique in this sense. There are other individuals, Muhammad Ali, for example, who developed Parkinson's disease in his 30s. Uh, but young patients with Parkinson's disease present particular challenges. Uh, it's easier to cope perhaps with Parkinson's disease if you're in your 70s uh, than if you're a breadwinner in your 30s. In one way though, Ray's age is an advantage. The money raised from this game will buy him time, and if medical work on brain cell implantation goes well, the possibility of a cure. But Ray, who's divorced, has more immediate concerns. Me two children, I want to see them be happy. That's all that matters to me at the moment, because they've been good to me. Um, when I had this illness, and they've stuck by me thick and thin, they've done things that children shouldn't do. I mean, grown-ups should be doing these things. I mean, looking after me, but they've done it, and they've taken it in their stride and not mourned once. But I suppose that's what you do for your father. And I, for that, I'll always be grateful, and I will always say, look after them. That is my, that is my, that's what keeps me going, my children. If I didn't have them, I reckon I'd, I reckon I'd pack in. Dalglish is going to get one here. Dalglish is throwing his down. And it's not a penalty, it's a penalty. Yes. Very confident strike by the Dane, and it's 1-0 to Liverpool. As I've had the disease now for five years, coming on five years, and I look and I see the, the, the my, my friends, my colleagues, all still in football, and I, I feel that uh, I feel a little bit pleased for them, but a little bit hurt because I feel that I should I could do so. Um, not saying I would have done it, but I feel that I would like to have had the chance. When I'm poorly, I realise I couldn't do anything, but because the injections give us so much more confidence and make me feel so much more normal and stable, I feel then that, that that's when I feel that I can be back, I could do anything again. And forward goes Campbell, Campbell stays, is there. Did I see a enormous hesitation from Bruce Grovelaro that might have flattened him in the game, but that was a lovely burst through by Kevin Campbell. He's got size, he's got power, but he's got a lot of pace too. <laughs> the half-time score, one each, has a hint of diplomacy about it. The half-time conversation is less tactful. Graham soon has. Looks like he's put it all on his legs, doesn't he? Yeah. He don't look, he don't look big upstairs. It's obviously a friendly, you know, um, but uh, it's good to see Sunus and Doug Lee and Jimmy Kiss back again. You're playing some better football, yeah. yeah. Playing some better football yeah. than we're used to. <laughs> Sad to see what has happened to him now. <laughs> I'll tell you, cool, great memories of him. And that's why you're here today, isn't it? Yeah, that's why I'm here today, to pay tribute to him. The big fella. Oh, Renner got a decent touch at last. Harkness with a cross. Difficult one, and here's Speedy. Well, he's not a big fella, but uh, give him a chance in the air, and he can bury them. Well, I don't know how uh, Ray Kennedy himself would view this result. He, of course, has started uh, at Arsenal after having been uh, rejected by Paul Vale at the age of 15. Came here as a young lad and uh, made a name for himself, picked up all sorts of medals in uh, the Frank McClintock era, but. Of course, then he did have massive success at uh, Liverpool. And it's uh, Liverpool trying to make this game safe here with R Ray Houghton forward for Beardsley. Peter Beardsley, 3-1.
with less than three minutes of the game left. Beardsley gets a challenge in, as if the championship itself was at stake. As the whistle goes for the end of this Ray Kennedy testimonial match here at Highbury. And a good time had by all with the final score, Arsenal 1, Liverpool 3. The score, of course, is the least of anyone's concerns. More important are the £70,000 gate receipts, which will ease Ray's immediate financial future, and the show of respect and affection from his peers, which will stay with him a bit longer. He had the strength of an ox when he played. In the light of what's going on, he's going to need all the strength in the world. And, he, of course, he can always turn to the likes of us and the likes of the Cockney people and everything who will always be there to help him. I think football generally and his colleagues, both at Liverpool and Arsenal, are all rallying round to help him in every way possible. He's just a nice fellow. Oh, I would say unique. It's rushing blow. It's just a shame that uh, things have developed the way they are. I would say he was a good friend. To sum up, I would say that he was a very strong-willed, a very dedicated professional who uh, who defined a role for himself on the pitch and, and really excelled at it and probably did it better than anybody has ever done it. One's really seeing the sort of determination that one saw for many years during his playing career at Arsenal and Liverpool now being manifested in his fight against Parkinson's disease. He's my best mate, it's as simple as that. I, I, I believe I can help people, yes, I hope so, yeah. If they see, if they see this, and I just see, just stroll on, just, just, fight, just keep going, don't back in. And it'll come right for I'm sure of it. It's, it's within yourself. Together now, in no man.